Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The linkages between the tourism sector and culture have been made evident through soaring arrival figures. The government of St. Lucia moves towards a national spatial data infrastructure. This is the Arthur Lewis Community College and the University of the Virgin Islands signs an MOU. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyant. The linkages between the tourism sector and culture have been made evident following the success of St. Lucia's Carnival between the months of June to July. Minister for Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, spoke to the issue during Tuesday's sitting of Parliament. General Norville reports. St. Lucia remains one of the fastest growing tourist destinations in the Eastern Caribbean. From January to July 2019, tourist arrivals have grown by 7.5 percent. July 2019, when compared to July 2018, recorded an increase of 13 percent in tourist arrivals. Arrivals from the U.S. market for July 2019 recorded a 23 percent increase. According to Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, the recorded figures speak clearly to the strength and demand for St. Lucia Carnival. Well, July... Uh, comes in at an aggregate of 42,773. That is the first time in the history of our country that what is considered the traditional low period, that it has surpassed a winter month or all winter months, Mr. Speaker, ever in history and also for the year of 2019. And so, Mr. Speaker, what it does is that it shows that the investment and the policy shift of this government to move away from overinvestment in the jazz festival and to focus on our carnival, Mr. Speaker, has yielded significant benefits and it has highlighted and showcased our culture, our indigenous culture, carnival, Mr. Speaker, as the biggest festival in St. Lucia. The minister also highlighted the success of the recently concluded 9th Annual UK Showcase. The minister indicated that St. Lucia was able to unveil a comprehensive marketing strategy and an additional $1 million US dollars will be injected into direct advertising in the UK market. This, he said, is very important to mitigate any potential fallout stemming from Brexit. Honorable Fede explained that St. Lucia would also be receiving increased airlift from the UK market. Meetings were held with Thomas Cook, British Airways, and Thompson, Mr. Speaker, as airlines that have indicated significant interest in advancing capacity. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, in the coming weeks, we will be making uh, very specific announcements as it relates to how the individual carriers will be expanding uh, their capacity into St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, we estimate that based on the meetings we had, we will see, Mr. Speaker, in the region of 500 to 750 extra seats coming into St. Lucia on a weekly basis from the UK market. During the UK showcase, two fundraising charity initiatives were held, where over 1,000 EC dollars was raised for the St. Lucia Diabetes Association and the Boys Training Center. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Tourism is collaborating with the Travel Foundation in developing the human resource in the tourism sector. Thursday, a press launch was held for a national action plan and capacity building workshop for hotel personnel. Anissi Antoine was in attendance. The Ministry of Tourism, in collaboration with the Travel Foundation, have officially launched the Low Carbon and Resource Efficient Action Plan for accommodation in St. Lucia. The action plan focuses mainly on energy and waste and includes recommendations for government and related public agencies such as policy formulation, incentives and infrastructure changes, as well as recommendations for hotels and their suppliers to improve energy efficiency, reduce waste generation for sustainable procurement. Carolina Fernandez is the Destinations Program Officer at the Travel Foundation. 
The main objective of the action of this project is to strengthen the capacity of the tourism sector to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions, improve resource efficiency, and drive sustainable production and consumption to ultimately decoupling tourism growth from carbon emissions and assist the country to achieve their NDCs. The action plan has been developed under the Transforming Tourism Value Chain project led by the UN Environment Programme and implemented in St. Lucia by the Travel Foundation. Vincent Sweeney is the head of the Caribbean Sub-Regional Office of UNEP. We are now at the point of implementation, and implementation of this plan will require collective work and partnerships. And I think that's important to, to repeat. The implementation, because we don't just want a nice booklet that you walk home and you put on your shelf or in your office. We want something that will be implemented. And it will require collective work and partnerships to guarantee success and sustainability. The head of the Caribbean Sub-Regional Office of UNEP formally presented a copy of the action plan to the Minister for Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominique Fede. Honorable Fede reaffirmed his commitment to ensuring the success of the project. We've embraced the, the vision of a competitive tourism destination as a catalyst for sustainable national development. So again, embracing uh, the two themes of com competitiveness, but also sustainability. And that we believe is very comprehensive. The Low Carbon Resource Efficient Action Plan for Accommodation for St. Lucia was launched on Thursday, September 19, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. Still with capacity building in tourism, discussions are ongoing between St. Lucia and the top-rated hospitality university about the possibility of such a facility in St. Lucia. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney met with the head of Lausanne University while in Switzerland. It is hoped that the university would serve not only St. Lucia, but the rest of the Caribbean. We all believe that uh, having a high-quality tertiary-level facility here would be fantastic. What's great about the curriculum at Lausanne is that it's fully integrated both in academics as well as practical. And given the number of hotel rooms that we have here, um, our access to the cruise market, that we can provide those opportunities for the young people that while they're at school, they can also now intern at different uh, levels of, host of, of, of hotels as well as the, the cruise industry. Prime Minister Honorable Chastney anticipates that representatives from the university will visit St. Lucia later this year. Um, the DSH project is actually building a 230-room uh, hotel specifically to be a university hotel, um, which will be right next to the, um, the operation. So once the Lausanne group sign on, then they'll be proceeding to, to build the, the property. So they have seen the, the designs. Um, they already work with the DSH group in Switzerland. Um, so. Um, uh, the Lausanne University has been working with um, Mr. Taylor King and his group for the last four years. So I want to thank him for the opportunity he's created for this new, um, this new development. And that was Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney. In other developments, recognizing that geospatial data is an asset that can be used for better decision making and for the implementation of more effective and efficient policy decisions, the government of St. Lucia, through the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, DVRP, offered a consultancy to Kadaska International to assist with the establishment of a National Spatial Data Infrastructure, NSDI. More from Lucia's Doxery. The consultancy is being managed by the Department of Physical Planning, which is seeking to establish open systems and platforms to create, share, analyze and use disaster risk and climate change data and information for improved decision making as well as for risk reduction and climate change adaptation. Consultant with Cadaster International Danny Van der Brucke says a spatial data infrastructure is about storing and sharing information. So as the eyes it's quite a technical term but it means in fact that you build the platform where you put together geospatial data from different stakeholders, can be on uh, road networks, it can be on disaster management, it can be on agriculture. So a lot of different spatial data are existing 
but they should be better disclosed and made available for everyone. So it's about sharing of geospatial data. That's what the project is about and the strategy is being developed gradually together with all the stakeholders. To date, the government of St. Lucia has made significant investments in the acquisition and use of spatial information for planning, governance of the nation and the delivery of public services. GIS officer in the Department of Physical Planning, Philip Hippolyte, says the ongoing consultancy is critical to effective decision making. When you have this centralized uh, architecture, because it's not just a system, it's about policy, it's about governance, it's about how we do business, it, it, it creates an enrichment for decision making when you have all the information uh, uh, created in, in, in a uh, one packaged environment. When it's as occurs, you need information from roads, you need telecommunication information, you need uh, to know how the slopes, uh, slope stabilization for landslides, and all that information now can be pulled from different agencies, from forestry, from infrastructure, from uh, water resources, and, and uh, surveying and mapping, and planning, and you get all of this information and it can be collated quickly. With a vision for the spatial data infrastructure already established, stakeholders have been engaged in discussing ways in which the vision can be successfully implemented. It is anticipated that the final report from the consultants will be delivered in the next few months. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt this thing to my right leg. And when I look back, I knew it was a, a, a full of snake. If you happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake, this is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours. You will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we can be known for snake bite. It is the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome everyone to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Officials from the St. Lucia Tourism Authority are pleased with the success of last weekend's Channel Swim by Cameron Bellamy and the exposure it has brought to the island. Senior Marketing Officer of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, Jackie Matra, told the open water swimmer she was proud of his record and that St. Lucia was involved. I've reached out to our colleagues in Barbados and it's so nice to have that inter-island sharing of, of, of this feat that you've accomplished. Um, uh, we, are we are very proud of you. We want to say that uh, we are thankful that you made it and that you're healthy and that you're great and that you created a world record and in St. Lucia. Meanwhile, Sue Dyson, one of the organizers of the St. Lucia Channel Swim, emphasized that a lot of preparation went into the event, stating, that channel swimming is not easy. It's not easy at all. Um, it's not easy for the swimmer. It's not easy for the support crew. But it's been going on since 1875, which is when Captain Webb swam across the English Channel for the first time. But to have a historic event, someone crossing the longest channel swim, um, with Cameron doing that, we are just in the midst of a great man to think that he has not ever been a swimmer until recent years. Um, so the English Channel is a feat. The, being an Ocean 7 swimmer is even more of a, a feat. And to be the 11th person to do it, I commend you because I know that you hadn't been swimming long when you did that. So, but now to, to do this, Cameron, you're just amazing. Bellamy took on a 94-mile open water swim challenge last weekend from St. Peter's Bay in Barbados to St. Lucia 
that ended just off Mulashi. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is currently making up the schedule for school sports events 2019-2020, particularly Big 8 football and netball. Following a meeting on Monday at the Ministry's conference room on Miku Street with physical education teachers from secondary schools on the island. Another meeting, set for September 24th at 9 a.m., this time involving primary school physical education teachers, will assist the Ministry in finalizing and formatting this year's Inter School Sporting Events. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and the University of the Virgin Islands are collaborating for the advancement of higher education for St. Lucians. A memorandum of understanding between the two learning institutions was signed on September 18, 2019, and will allow for joint faculty research and student exchange, among other things. Vice President for Business Development and Innovation at UVI, Dr. Haldane Davies, says one of the more significant areas of cooperation is the seamless transition of students from the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College to attend the UVI. By the Middle States Commission on Higher Education, which is one of the six regional accrediting bodies across the United States of America that's recognized by the U.S. Department of Education. Our colleges and schools also have individual professional accreditation. Our School of Nursing has the ACN accreditation. Uh, our uh, School of Business, AACSB accreditation. Our School of Education, INCATE accreditation. And uh, we are going on for further education with social work, uh, with our computer programs, the ABET accreditation, and uh, our School of Medicine, uh, which is currently being developed and the buildings are under construction. Every student of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College who enrolls at UVI to pursue a bachelor's degree will receive an annual scholarship of approximately $6,000 from UVI. Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, John Calix, welcomes these opportunities. As Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, I am therefore confident that this relationship will, be, will redound to the benefit of all involved. UVI can be assured of, of quality graduates from this institution earning degrees in multiple disciplines that can only help grow our economy and our society. I do want to express the gratitude of the board for the offer of a scholarship of a, to a student who will be attending uh, the university um, or any one of your campuses in the Virgin Islands. On behalf of the Board of Governors, we do thank you for making that um, um, opportunity available to the students from, from the college. I also want to thank you for the opportunity to allow our students to work at the university and also be paid for the services. And that was Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, John Callix. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyol. When a hurricane is approaching, safety of life and the preservation of livelihoods is most important. We should take heed. Create proper drainage along the contour of your farm. Harvest and store all crops that could be harvested and if possible to sell any produce, do so. Reinforce farmhouses by using screws or hurricane ties to secure the roof and ensure that it is boarded up. Remove all plastic covers from greenhouses and store properly in your reinforced farmhouse. Secure all official agriculture and farming business documents and policies in sealed plastic coverings. And perhaps consider taking out a crop insurance policy to secure your agro livelihood. Take all possible precaution ahead of a hurricane or tropical storm. This is the hurricane season and we should be prepared. A message brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. Mr. Madam Debatmark in the West Coast Ability, where from us here are Governor Sitlisees as a GIS. As a television national player, NTN, Capositol, 
Novela Coelho. Was it all? Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette ci a un projet pour réduire la faiblesse commune pour des désastres naturels. Just here, your courtois, et puis company Alpha Engineering and Construction Limited, le 9 septembre, pour conduire un assessment entièrement concernant la situation côté problème de l'eau qui existe, et manière pour adresser et contrôler sous l'eau pour abattre la falaille et la façon pour guider les meilleurs chemins pour l'eau qui Ça a fait pour comme une denry, pense Jacques, et souffrir. Toi, comme une sala, tu trouves bon choc après cyclone Thomas à l'année 2010, et aussi Trofla, qui dévalise les pays à la veille Noël l'année 2013. C'est comme une sala très risquable pour Godelot et Afalai, qui a l'occasion en pile la rivière pour plein et puis sable et l'autre boussaille. Ça aussi, c'est une cause de l'eau pour te faire l'autre chemin qui menace grand chemin, les résidents, les ponts, les, les utilités, l'école et l'habitation agricole. Du bon sermon, pour si vous avez ça, c'est que le département des affaires construction, Ivan Daniel, notez l'importance là qui s'est fait aller par conséquence des mauvais temps qui passent récemment et décambouillés les autres pays à Caribla. Chef Gang Alpha Engineering, Pays Khan, déclare que c'est 4% assez plus avancé de travailler sur cette lycée. Il promet pour adresser et corriger ces situations là à ces communes-là. Car ça vient une solution de résilience des changements climat. Quand il ces travailleurs, ces spécialistes qui sont très capables, et qui sont très capables, ces résidents, en ces communes-là, qui ont réalisé le bénéfice à total. Assessement, ça là, pour déterminer les conditions de ces communes-là, pour abattre le problème de l'eau. Ça, c'est Denry, François Jacques, et Soufrier. C'est continuation pour adresser le projet de stabilisation contre Afalai, travail canal, à effort gouvernement, c'est ici. Un bas projet pour réduire la faiblesse du pays à des as naturels, au rôle de cette ici. La consultation a commencé le 16 septembre, supposé bout en mois de février 2020. Export saint louche trouvé succès à effort pour jouer une assistance finance pour une institution qui est très importante. Ça, c'est une institution hot bank de développement, c'est CDB, pour Caribla, qui est formée principalement pour aider les industries de créateurs et culture. Et cette chose a trouvé établie en l'année 2017. Et attention, c'est pour supporter le développement de l'industrie de secteur de créatif à Caribla. Export saint louche collaboré et puis Events Company à cette ci Dominica Authority. Spice Mass Corporation et OECS Competitive Business Unit qui a fait une présentation des applications pour assistance à la. C'est diverses institutions à la, qui ont servi l'argent pour improuver à sa manière pour présenter et faire publication et aussi pour placer les produits carnivales à sa meilleure façon commerciale. Chaque CPI à la, qui a adressé et approcher l'initiative, ça là, a différentes manières pour présenter les produits et pour les participants et les étrangers apprécier la valeur du produit carnaval. À la fin, le plan, c'est pour faire assurer de trouver un grand profit pour le business et l'industrie, ça là, export saint louche et qui vend saint louche qui travaillent après, et puis l'autre agence en pays, la Fondation de développement culturel et Autorité des affaires touristiques, à cette et aussi secteur privé pour faire ce qui pour que ça la opéré à bénéfice de tout le pays généralement. Export saint louche n'y a pas de l'initiative qui a improuvé la meilleure place au carnaval, à cette ci aussi musique pays, boissons qui a produit en pays, les bandes, costumes et culture. Club Rotary Hot Gozile, à ce moment Club Rotary Satellite de cette ci Ça, c'est Satellite de cette ci Sunset, venir ensemble, et puis World Wild Chair Foundation, une organisation de chaises à roule pour présenter à peu près 280 chaises à roule 
pour les citoyens de ici qui pas capable. 28 à ces choses là, tu préparé spécialement pour ça le développement pour les enfants pendant le café distribution les restants au Liban cette ici. Elaine Clement hold ça pour développement les petits enfants explique qui pour tuer payant grand contribution pour assister à des gros là et ajouter qui ça va aider tout ce monde ça là pour ça visiter continuer pas ça aller avant par exemple pour faire commission yo en ces supermarchés avec l'autre place parce que troisième lundi qui club rotary a fait présentation ces choses là et club rotary devenir ensemble et puis club lyon puis fort pour faire présentation en sud pays et c'est comme ça nous autre bout nouvelle monsieur là mon cas monsieur autre pour ca garder mon ca bon invitation je ne puis moi encore c'est dire conserver la vie dans la présentation de l'autre nouvelle à créole après ça mon ca vieux présenter au niche Merci au Pill Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair skies occasionally becoming cloudy with a few scattered showers and a chance of thunderstorms. Moisture and instability in the lower atmosphere over the eastern Caribbean islands will cause a few showers during the next 24 hours. Tropical Storm Jerry has been upgraded to a hurricane. Jerry is moving toward the west-northwest near 16 miles per hour or 26 kilometers per hour and this general motion is expected to continue today. On this track, the eye of Jerry will be near the northern Leeward Islands tomorrow and pass north of Puerto Rico on Saturday. Maximum sustained winds have increased to near 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour with higher gusts. Jerry is forecast to strengthen during the next day before some weakening begins this weekend. Hurricane Jerry poses no threat to St. Lucia at this time. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic has a low potential for development during the next few days. This wave is being closely monitored as it moves westwards towards the eastern Caribbean at 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 6.31 p.m. The tide for Vefor Bay was low at 1.30 p.m. and will be high again at 7.38 p.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves and swells 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.